stay here one more time Remind me what it's like And let's fall in love One more time I need you now By my side Up until pretty recently, Intel has been at the top of my recommendation lists in terms of gaming performance, and I've featured in just about every one of the gaming PCs I've personally ever built since the early days of the i5 and the i7, with AMD releasing pretty lackluster CPUs in competition. But with the release of the 11th gen CPUs this year, it might just be the last straw for me personally, and looking at the specs, it's easy to begin to see why. The i7-11700K that we have in the studio for testing comes in at a base clock speed of 3.6 GHz and it can be boosted up to 5 GHz. It also has 8 cores and 16 threads, which is not a bad set of specifications for any CPU in today's market. The issue is that when you look a bit deeper into Intel's previous releases, it becomes clear that this is a very lackluster CPU. The i7-10700K that was released almost a year ago has the same specs as this, the same TDP, the same core speed, but it can be boosted up to 5.1 GHz. So essentially what Intel has achieved on paper in the last year is a reduction of 0.1 GHz on the boost clock speed of the 700K variant. When we look towards the top end of the market and the flagship CPUs, it gets even worse for Intel. Not only does it not stack up in terms of performance against AMD, it doesn't even compare to their 10th generation Intel cores, with a drop of 25% on the 900K variant compared to the 10th generation. Clearly, AMD has a tight hold on the upper end of the market with the 5950X having double the core count of the i7-11900K and the more evenly priced 59. 100X having nearly 50% more cores with a better power efficiency. The only thing that Intel can really compete on is the single core max clock speed for the 11900K which can be boosted up to 5.3 GHz using Intel's Velocity Boost technology. As a kind of band-aid for poor performance on paper, Intel has given in to pressure and released PCIe Gen 4 lanes which is something new for the 11th gen CPUs. This does give some nice increases to performances on things like SSDs and enables you to increase the amount of GPUs you have on your machine. That being said, it's not going to improve your gaming performance too much and outside of specific things like crypto mining or specific workloads, multi-GPU support is not really something that Nvidia and competitor AMD is really looking for. That being said, AMD released this back in 2019 and with their release of the X570 and 3000 series CPUs. So it's not a massive win for the blue team and they're definitely not the first to market for PCIe Gen 4 lanes. On the other side of new features for the 11th gen, Intel has cobbled together a bunch of words like AI uh, and media compression, but in the real world, this doesn't translate to performance. But with all the negativity surrounding the 11th gen release, is there any redeeming qualities for the i7-11700K? And has Intel hidden something in their software to make this thing perform in the real world and not just look bad on paper? We thought the 5800X from AMD was a valid competitor for the Intel i7-11700K, although at the time of filming, the 5800X is a bit more expensive than the 11700K. The test benches were pretty similar. The only difference was that the i7-11700K was water-cooled and the 5800X wasn't, and that's because the advantage of overclocking the Intel is much higher than the AMD, being a K version of the CPU. Going into the benchmarks, it's a sea of red wins in terms of Cinebench, with the 5800X crushing the i7-11700K in R15, R20, and R23 by up to 21% on multi-core performance and 13% on single-core performance. 
This is despite Intel claiming the i7-11700K has a higher boost frequency than the 5800X and losing out on the single core test. On the Blender side, again, the 5800X crushed the 700K in both the BMW test and the classroom test by 3% and 11%. And finally, in the V-Ray test, the 5800X again had an edge of up to 21% on the Intel i7-11700K. Clearly, we needed to overclock the i7-11700K to get anywhere close to the 5800X in terms of performance. So we utilized the new Asus AI overclocking feature and managed to get the CPU above 5 GHz, but with a scary high voltage of 1.668 volts. I definitely wouldn't be leaving it on these settings for long periods of time, and I think stability would definitely be an issue in the future with these specific settings. In these tests, the Intel CPU did fare better against the 5800X, but it was again a sea of red wins, with the Intel only edging out the AMD CPU in Blender BMW test, and the maximum difference between the two CPUs being 9% on Cinebench R15. An interesting thing we noticed while reviewing the i7-11700K was just the amount of power that the bench was consuming. The bench under pressure was consuming 450 watts in a multi-test scenario in things like Blender and Cinebench, and under a single core testing it reached almost 150 watts. This was using pretty aggressive overclocking settings, but this was really the only way we were able to get anywhere near to the 5 GHz setting that Intel had promised. So even with something as insane as say the Cooler Master Sub-Zero Cooler, you wouldn't be getting anywhere near the performance and cooling required with that thing only being able to cool up to 200 watts. An awesome feature of the new Asus motherboards is the ability to auto detect the quality of the CPUs and Al scored a pretty appalling 59 out of 100 on that test. So we have been extremely unlucky in terms of the chip that we received, but again, this doesn't bode well for Intel's quality control if you're buying one of these on the shelf and just so happen to get one similar to ours. At a price point of $500 for the i7-11700K, you'd have to be an absolutely dedicated Intel fan to be considering upgrading to the 11th gen or benefit considerably from the PCIe Gen 4 lanes. With Intel teasing information about the 12th generation already, it's as if they want to sweep the 11th gen under the rug and have everyone forget it was ever released. But with the perception that Intel is building for themselves, the 12th generation is going to have to be one hell of a release if they want to change people's mind and make Intel the leader of the market again. If you're considering building a PC, then I would strongly suggest that you check out the 10700K that Intel released a year ago, or check out the offerings from AMD and something like the 5800X. Thank you guys so much for checking out the review of the i7-11700K and a bit of an overview of the 11th gen CPUs in general. If you like the content, then feel free to like and subscribe the video. And as always guys, have a great day.